This video goes over a practical example of the simulation based chance constraint method explained in the video with a similar title. The method is intended for mixed integer programs with stochastic parameters. First, a brief summary of the method. In step 1, a set of S samples of the stochastic parameters of the model is generated. These are then used to construct a deterministic model. In step 2, the deterministic model is solved and the optimal solution X is acquired. Finally, in the optional step 3, further analysis can be performed to check the quality of the solution. Consider some firm or production facility that can take on a number of jobs from the set J. The firm is divided into a set of branches given by I. We associate a binary variable xij with each of the jobs, such that xij is 1 if and only if we decide to take the job j in branch i. We want to maximize the profit of the jobs that we take on. However, the profits cj are stochastic. Each job also takes some time to complete, given by aj, which is also stochastic. Furthermore, the profit and completion times are somewhat correlated for each job. For example, it might be that for a certain job, if it turns out to take a lot of time to complete, the profit will be higher as well. Each branch of the firm has a total number of hours available given by TI, and these must be respected by the solution. Because the firm can hire extra help if necessary, the leadership actually considers these constraints soft constraints. But hiring help from outside is expensive and therefore it is decided that a solution should satisfy all constraints with probability 95%. In other words, the new stochastic constraint looks like this. Instead of solving the stochastic model with this new chance constraint, we decide to solve the deterministic approximation generated from sampling. It turns out that the A's are normally distributed and can easily be sampled separately. However, the C's are a bit different. They follow the A's with a linear factor, but are cut off at a minimum and maximum profit. Everything below the minimum is rounded up, and everything above the maximum is rounded down. This means that for each of the CLs, we first have to simulate AL from the appropriate normal distribution, then multiply the result with 500, and finally round up or down if necessary. We decide to sample the parameters 100 times, where one sample is a full set of values for each stochastic parameter in the model. We can now write up and solve the deterministic model. To the left, we see our stochastic model from earlier, and to the right, we see the deterministic approximation of that. We've had to introduce new binary variables, one for each of the samples. Rather than the old chance constraint, we now have this set of constraints that ensure that YL is zero if the solution is infeasible in the elf sample of the parameters. We had to introduce the new parameter m in order to model the y's. m is just a large number. Notice also this new constraint, which ensures that the solution is feasible for at least 95 of the 100 parameter samples. Finally, notice that we had to add a new L index on the sample parameters. And in the objective function, we decided to simply use the mean value of the sample C's which is a typical way of handling stochastic objective parameters. The model can now be solved using a branch and bound solver, which is not shown here. But we will end up with some optimal solution x star as well as an optimal objective value c star. Then we might want to check the probability that the solution is feasible using a significantly larger sample size of 10,000. A simple way to do this is to plug in the solution x star into the constraints one by one. This has to be done for each of the 10,000 samples. But we only need to find a single violated constraint to know that the solution is infeasible for a certain sample of values of the parameters. In our example, it might turn out that 9,235 of the 10,000 samples are okay, meaning that the solution is feasible in 92% of the cases. This is slightly lower than the desired 95%, Perhaps that means that we want to go back and redo the deterministic model with a larger sample to make it more robust. But let's, for the sake of this example, say that we are content with the 92% and hence can conclude the analysis.